Okay, um, a couple weeks ago I got a request on a comment on one of my previous YouTube videos to do a demonstration of setting up the modulation monitor. So that's what this video is all about today. It's going to be short, hopefully not too long winded. Um, the only thing I'm going to add to the front of all this is that I'm not an engineer. I don't pretend to be an engineer. I'm the kind of, I'm sort of mechanically inclined and, and electrically in inclined so I can figure things out pretty well. Uh, but I do a lot of my learning by hunting and pecking and playing around and seeing what, you know, what things I do, you know, get what kind of reaction or, or what kind of behavior out of the system. So again, not an engineer and I just sort of self-taught with the limited things that I do know. So with that said, I would like to ask anybody who does know about these QEIs, um, who sees that I'm saying something wrong or I've set up something wrong or maybe not calibrating something correctly, please make the comment uh, and let, let me know and let anybody else who's uh, watching know um, be a, a, a good benefit for us all. Okay, that out of the way, let's get down to it here. Okay, so on my transmitter, I have two outputs. I have a, an RF monitor out and a modulation monitor out. I use the RF monitor and it basically produces a very low uh, wattage RF signal, basically tapping off of the, the main signal, but it's a very low level signal. Uh, and I take that, that's what this white cord is. I take this and essentially this is what feeds the trans, uh, the uh, modulation monitor. Now, just to stop here for a second, the RF that's coming off of my transmitter is not powerful enough to drive this modulation monitor so I had to go out and buy this RF amp and sort of screw it to the back this RF amp I got it off of eBay is like $25 it's it's very broadband so it was like 50 megahertz to 500 megahertz and it was like 20 dBi or dB you know increase so it worked um, based on the meter on the levels on the front it, it was uh, it does bring me up to a sufficient level for this modulation monitor to work so good so the output from this goes into one of the BNCs in the back here. It's the RF input. And then next to that is the dummy load BNC. So the RF goes in here, and this is RF that's directly off the transmitter. And they say, the book says, you do need your dummy load. So that's this dummy load came with it, and it's this kind of a hokey dummy load. All it is is a BNC with like a... Um, uh, like a like a just a plain old Radio Shack style resistor inside of it, very basic. There's also uh, an RF level here, and I had messed with this. I had cranked this up all the way with before the amp, and still wasn't sufficient. You can actually hook this to an external antenna, to the the antenna uh, input there, and that way you can monitor mul multiple stations just like one a basic T antenna. I don't. I'm not a big. Uh, this is one of the things I don't know a whole lot about, you know, what the rest of this, these uh, jacks and plugs do. You can plug headphones into here, into your FM, and get the signal um, off of, you know, using basically the modulation monitor as a receiver. And then there's this barrier strip here, and you can basically hook up any of the dials and any of the meters in the front externally through this. Okay, so now let's get around to the front. The camera down. Apologies for that let's turn it on so all the hardware it's hardwired in the back or just plugged into the back rather then the next thing you do is you set your frequency that you're broadcasting on I have mine set at 1017 I want to verify that your RF level is good before that RF amp I was low with that RF amp I'm okay and you want to go to your pilot and adjust this till you get till this is present um, and and it's a good signal that you're getting so that means that this is tuned correctly. And from that point, um, you can then look at your modulation. And, and from that point on, it's pretty much, you're done, the setup. And everything else is just doing your normal monitoring. Um, I set my, here's my main modulation monitor. And you can set your peak modulation light to, to trip um, when it hits this percentage of modulation. So I have mine set at 105%. And when it does that, this thing will go off which it just did. Um, there are these peaks per minute, but I think this calibration is broken because it basically goes up to 20 in a second. Um, you could do positive and negative, or ne positive and negative modulation. Um, I don't really mess with any of these things. There's the scope here. I, for an oscilloscope plug-in, I don't have one. So I, next, 
Um, I don't even, I don't have any SCA, so this is out. Um, all this is out, and then my audio, like I said, I already have a receiver, so I don't really need to pull audio off of here. The other uh, component to this are these two channel A and channel B, which are like um, utility meters. There are, they, they can, this strip of buttons allows you to configure what these are gonna be measuring in any number of different ways. Uh, I don't have, and these are more in depth and, and more uh, engineering type of uh, uses that I would never use. Uh, I don't really know what I'd be doing with 38, my 38 kilohertz, my signal to noise ratios, either FM or AM, any SCA, I already said I don't do. So really basically I just let, I leave these on the left and right stereo channels and they are measuring the modulation. You can um, have it go positive modulation. I think this is positive or negative modulation. Um, you can see what the, this, uh, the right and left is with your de-emphasis or flat. Um, and basically that's it. Well, that's as much as I know. Like I said, I, this is probably not perfectly calibrated, um, but I think it's probably pretty close because of I also have the uh, modulation, a, a small modulation monitor on the transmitter, which uh, sort of validates a lot of what this is saying is correct. I've also, that one time I plugged this into a T antenna and looked at other stations around the dial here, um, they were, you know, sounded and looked very similar. So I think I have my, um, you know, I think for the most part, I'm probably within five or ten percent accuracy, which is good enough for me, um, for, from a modulation and, and a calibration perspective. Oh, the one thing I didn't say is that uh, right here, this is these um, rotary dials, and and the light for each, basically is the same basic concept as the peak modulation monitor and and setting its light, its warning light. So I have these set at one hundred percent. So when the right or left hits one hundred percent of its of its sound modulation, uh, this red light goes. So it's a red light for the individual right and left and a yellow light for the total modulation. I think that's about it. I uh, said that this is going to be a short video, so let's keep it at that. Thanks for watching.